Yo, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Doing tears or are we? Okay, let me But I'm gonna pretend that I never did that. You know what? Never mind. I'm I'm sticking to it. I'm gonna commit to the role this time. <laughs> Doing tears or are we? Hmm, this is new. What's what's the reason? Well, I've always watched Tier Zoo. I'm pretty sure everybody does. They're such a beautiful channel. Such a beautiful channel. And of course, I want to make a video on it. I think I already have made a couple. They're just lost in the deep, ever-lending, ever... never-ending trenches of obscurity. So, crows. My favorite avians. Obviously, I'm gonna make a video on it. Let's, let's see. Huh? You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. I'm not kidding at all. Crows are actually my favorite bird, and always have been. Because who the heck doesn't want to be a crow? They're fiercely intelligent and very intimidating. They've already lost. They just don't know it. Look at this They're nonsense. Behind. Yunk! What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do now about it? Right. Yeah. Give me that delicious stuff. Mm -mm. We've lost control of the command post. Give me that small space that you can barely fit. Primates are notorious for their incredibly broken intelligence stat, which grants them access to incredible advanced techniques such as tool use, coordinated team strategies, and even bartering and trade. But primates are not the only faction in the game with a high intelligence stat. Cetacean, cephalopod, and bird mates also commonly opt not to spec into powerful damage dealing abilities, and instead invest yeah. into leveling up their brain power skill tree. While this does seem like a risky choice, leaving the player more vulnerable in direct 1v1 combat, Dang. in actuality this often results in a much less risky playthrough, as the player's intelligence opens up more options for them to progress that don't require winning in combat. Good stuff! This is especially true of the bird faction, as their ability to fly already allows them to quickly escape Why most we, oh. unfavorable combat encounters. Oh! Today, we're going to discuss stuff. one of the two main intelligence-centered bird builds, yes. the faction that contains crows, ravens, and magpies. My favorite faction of them all, Corvids. The Corvid. <laughs> this video is going to focus mostly on crows as an example, but generally what I say in this video should apply to most Corvids. Because they're awesome, yes! The First, answer is let's discuss yes. their stats, as well as the abilities and strategies that exemplify them. We'll begin with their stealth stat, which 80, Corvids aren't 89? particularly excellent in. Dang. The most popular Corvid skins are either Jet Black or Piebald, neither of which grant the user that strong of a stealth bonus. Except at night. In fact, in snowy areas, Jet Black feathers are actually one of the least effective choices when trying to remain hidden. A dark appearance is most effective as camouflage at night. But crows and other corvids are not nocturnal builds. Hey, shout out to all the people who went to basic training with me and <laughs> when I opened the door for everyone at night got scared, got got startled by my presence. It happened like e every single night. Most nights I was standing behind the door holding doors because that's what I do. But somehow, even though I do it, I did it often every time that we would end final formation, they still got scared. <laughs> it's like... <gasps> I'm here every night, don't you realize? So they aren't really gaining this benefit from it. I didn't see you there. I now, know. granted, stealth Just typically isn't all years. that important for birds, given how <laughs> agile and though. vigilant they are. Plenty of other high-tier avian builds, like for example parrots, are arguably some of the least stealthy birds in the game, and they do just fine. You could even argue that corvids are even less stealthy than their black feathers initially appear, Dang. as their iridescence actually makes them even easier to see for Ooh. certain other players, I didn't know they typically were other birds. Ultimately, I think it's safe to say stealth is not an important part of their game plan. At least, nowhere near as important as it is for ambush predator builds, like the owl. <laughs> the main predators a crow needs to worry about are raptors. And because of the raptor's keen eyesight ability, it's un- crow needs to worry about are raptors. And because of the raptor- that's supposed to be K-E-E-N. Raptor's keen eyesight ability, it's unlikely having a higher stealth stat would make much of a difference. <laughs> what the frick? The crow's defense and constitution stats are fairly average for a bird, which is to say uh, not great. At all. Birds have hollow bones and their feathers offer fairly little in terms of defense. Yep. Feathers do absorb some blunt force damage, but when it comes to slashing and piercing damage, it's nearly useless. And because of their hollow bones, which make them more vulnerable to blunt force damage, the benefit there kind of cancels out as well. Mm -hmm. Snakes, cats, raccoons, Rocket, raptors, and dogs 
all have a high chance of taking a crow out in one hit. Ah. So they cannot let their guard down when interacting with any damage dealer builds. Dang it. Given that their playstyle necessitates taking some risk, pro players definitely wish they had more room for error. Thankfully, their next stat makes it pretty easy to avoid damage. The, quickness, the crow's mobility agility. is a little above average for a mid-sized bird, which is to say, excellent. Mm -hmm. Birds in general are just extremely agile, both on the ground and in the air. We are extremely agile, us crows. My fastest two mile time was... Is this still 11.50? Did I ever- No, my fastest is 1127. Making them extremely hard to land an attack on if they see you coming. Me. My slowest Some is 13, bird builds, like geese and jungle fowl, require significant startup in order to get airborne, meaning that they can't rely on their flight to escape danger if the danger is already right in front of them. Crows are not one of these bird builds, and in contrast, the startup on their flight move has some shockingly broken frame data, mm -hmm. and allows them to quickly and easily Immediate. reposition themselves in basically any direction in greedy space almost instantly. This Let's makes their ability go. to dodge attacks one of the best Ooh. in the entire game and Delicious. makes what would normally be fairly dangerous positions, such as right next to a powerful predator, quite safe as long as the Corvid doesn't use any laggy moves. Right. This just synergizes well with the Corvid's combat moveset, as we'll discuss in a moment. They're just Corvids are Northern. blessed with many high stats, but power is not one of them. Look Their at ability his to deal <laughs> nah, look at Corvids his face. are blessed with many high stats, but power is not one of them. Their ability to deal damage is one of the weakest in their way class, as their only attack option is a simple pecking Bro. strike. <laughs> This move has quick startup and very little end lag, but its damage is egregiously low. Simply attacking with this move will Heck. do minimal damage to anything larger than an insect. Heck. Most players will be able to Heck. ignore this attack's damage. Heck. However, bite, this bite. doesn't mean a crow's attacks are useless. It just means they've got to be clever about how they use them. Mm -hmm. A well-placed peck can provoke an attack, and if you're able to move out of the way quick enough, the enraged player will end up being forced to lash out at whoever just happens to be nearby and create an opening for the Corvid player to capture an objective, steal some loot, or escape trouble. Said, Why the heck did you poke my it might seem like a jank strategy, but really this is the bread and butter of Corvid gameplay, and can lead to massive swings in advantage. Bosses. The chance to afflict the enraged status effect scales with the user's intelligence stat, so the reason this strategy works so well is that the Corvid's intelligence stat is ridiculously high for a non-primate build. <laughs> Corvids are tied with parrots for the highest intelligence stat in My boy, I'm literally standing right in front of you. Why do you think I picked your butt? Tied for a non-primate build. That's not me! Corvids are tied with parrots for the highest intelligence stat in the entire avian faction. And in addition to enabling the goading strike moveset, having high intelligence grants Corvids access to a lot of other powerful techniques too, including like the ability to use tools. Yep. Tool use is one of the most notoriously powerful abilities in the entire game. What the heck? And in crows, this is no less true. By using hook-shaped wooden sticks, crows can score kills on grubs that are normally safe from everything except for woodpecker oh attacks. My. Ooh, that's and a given nice how many expensive niche perks woodpeckers need to spec into in order to perform these sorts of drilling attacks, the ability to bypass all of that investment while still gaining the same rewards is a huge boon to the crows. Ooh. But high intelligence has far more benefits than just allowing crows to copy the success of hyper-specialized builds. Arguably the most important benefit is team tactics. Mm -hmm. This is what allows baboons to fight off lions, what allows ants to bring down tarantulas, and what allows wolves to prey upon bison. Oh my lord! When lo crows work together, Dang, bro! What the? Are you- you're just gonna leave me to die? Jesus! Tarantulas, and What's what allows wrong with wolves you? to prey upon bison. When crows All work right, together, they then. can capture territory and control points of interest that they'd otherwise be helpless to defend. They can even rescue each other from what would otherwise be guaranteed lethal attacks, Good. using a tactic called mobbing. Mobbing is a strategy most commonly <laughs> seen in birds, consisting of bombarding Dang. a single target with Dang. a barrage of both physical Dang. and sonic attacks. On their own, these would be easy to shrug off. But when you're getting pecked at and screeched at from all directions at once, it inflicts heavy physical and psychic damage. This is what allows social corvids, like magpies and crows, to successfully chase away predators several times their size. Ravens, on the other hand, tend not to really need the help, as they're large enough to handle most opponents one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, but big. can still team up in order to lock down a good source of carry-on. Alternatively, they may even ally themselves with wolf players, mm -hmm. leading them to a carcass and letting them do the work fighting off their competition before sharing in the rewards. Delicious. Anyway, that's a basic overview of the Corvid build. Now let's talk about their matchups. The Corvid matchup chart is heavily dependent on how effective their goading strike and mobbing techniques are against a given target. <laughs> 
Luckily, because of how high the Corbett's intelligence stat is, the list of targets Goading Strike works yum, against yum. is quite long. Delicious. It is best against builds with lower intelligence stats. Things like Vultures, things like Reptiles, and things like Rodents. What's more, this technique even works on one of the Corvid's two primary threats, mm -hmm. feline cats. builds. Deadly as cats are, they're often quite reactive and easily aggroed, they're so Goading Strike is the perfect tool to redirect their ferocity. This move is admittedly less effective against the Corvid's other main concern, raptors. Yep. However, thankfully the mobbing technique is quite effective against raptors, what the, you're pushing so for them off both of their main threats, the crow players have options. The only builds these techniques aren't that effective no against are other high intelligence builds, yep. such as monkeys and parrots. Because of their extremely strong social bonding and top tier intelligence stat, parrots are highly resistant to psychic damage and do not nah, 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 you should have played it. and top tier intelligence stat. <laughs> parrots are highly resistant to psychic damage and do not turn on each other easily. In fact, when pestered by a corvid, they are likely to defend each other fiercely using their own, more powerful beaks and louder shrieks. One on one, they're fairly evenly matched, so it tends to just come down to size. Oh. But in groups, corvids tend to have difficulty forcing parrots away from an objective. Yep. As for monkeys, their higher HP allows them to more easily ignore the pecking attacks of a crow. And they're used to getting their tails tugged all the time by their own party oh members, so the crow doing it is unlikely to provoke a punishable response. Jeez. Crows and parrots have an interesting dynamic. I've said in previous videos that I believe parrots to be the more viable build. They have higher dexterity with their beaks, their sonic shriek attack is incredibly effective, they're more social, and arguably more intelligent even. Eh, and yet, I of the that. two most- I think that corvids are more intelligent, but parrots just have more ways to utilize that intelligence. Just because they're so specialized. They're- I mean, look how many beaks parrots have. Intelligent bird builds, there's no denying that in the city biome, corvids are much more successful. I think the reason for this no! is that even though parrots are indeed more powerful on their own, and are better at using most tools than crows are, Crows are better at using the most important tools, other players. Yep. From provoking attacks and redirecting aggression, to using passing vehicles to deal damage for them and unlock high value loot, Corvids are the best of the best when it comes to using other builds' strengths to cover for their own shortcomings. Well that's nice. And if the human build's dominance is any indication, co-opting the strengths of less intelligent builds is one of the strongest strategies you can possibly execute in the game. Mm -hmm. And it's for this reason that Corvids sit proudly in S tier. Speaking of builds with a high success rate within the city biome, another Rats. creature that thrives in cities is the centipede. Ah. With their quick twitchy movement and flat shape, they have no trouble weaving through all of the nooks and crannies common in urban environments. This is the subject of my next video, which will be out on YouTube in a month or so. However, if you'd like to watch that video right now, you can access it a month in advance on Nebula, the sponsor of today's video. Now, we went a massive fine to get to the sorts of Smire of interesting animals, done in the style of a Let's Play livestream. One of the episodes I'm most proud of features the Mantispid, Delicious. a fascinating insect that has the characteristics of both a wasp and a mantis. Yes. How does it fare against other common garden insects? Well, well, you'll just have to check it out to see. I doubt many of you know this exists. It has been sort of hard to find on Nebula before, despite being exclusive to the platform. But now I really hope you give it a watch. One of the other new categories on Nebula is News which I find really helpful given how complicated geopolitics tends to be lately. Yeah. Specifically, they have this new current events show called The War Room, Delicious. which is made by the same talented people behind real-life lore and modern conflicts. Much like how the monkey's intelligence helps it avoid being used as a pawn in the crow's plan, knowledge about the defining geopolitics of our time is important to know about so that you are not provoked into a battle that you don't understand. Right. But on a more fun note, one show I've been really enjoying is Archaeology Quest, a show where scientists compete to see who can master the art of Paleolithic survival first, slash content for 40% off if you choose the annual plan, which adds up to as little as two and a half dollars a month. Thank you all so much- Two and a half a month, huh? So five dollars every two months? So ten dollars every four months? So thirty dollars a year? I mean, that's not, that's not bad. Much for watching, thanks again to Nebula for sponsoring this video, and as always, good luck out there.
tears of baby I know the Corvids are OP Believe me Cause I'm the crow No ravens in here Edgar Allan Poe can jump in his jeep And veer that way Cause we, we say We better continue to stinking slay That's just what I'm talking about You know what I mean Are you going to go to the comment section And leave me some things So I can read them Please Have you done it yet? Okay, let me stop this hey, If you enjoyed, go ahead and like, subscribe Cheers you is the best Pretty dang cool That's all I have to say Be great, have an awesome weekend I'm out You are loved, you are appreciated You're gonna do amazing things you are, you are loved, you are appreciated, you will do amazing things. Now I'm out. Goodbye.